Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. I'm Leslie Barry, and um, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about gluten-free travel. So I'm here today with my family from Philadelphia. My husband, John, is right in the back. And we have my daughter, Lexi, and my son, Jax, right here. He wants to wave to everybody. Jax is the one with celiac disease. <laughs> So I want to thank Children's National for putting on this great event and for having us here today. And just, yeah, okay. So the background of our story is in August 2018, Jax was diagnosed with celiac disease. And we were you know, shocked. It was a whole new world to us. It was a life-changing experience. Um, and we just kind of took it day by day. And so of course, the first thing to do was start trying out different gluten-free foods and and kind of starting to navigate the gluten-free world and, and see what products we could find that Jax liked. So for example, we tried 10 kinds of pasta before we could find one that he liked. So I thought it would be fun to sort of start sharing this information on social media, and I created the Gluten-Free Finds PA Instagram account. The PA is just for Pennsylvania, which is where we're from. And it started off just sharing some of Jax's uh, favorite products. It would kind of be little product reviews, you know, um, what we liked, what we liked about it. But it evolved as time went on um, to also include restaurants, um, that we dined at, as well as travel experiences. Comes the next slide. So we are a family that loves to travel. Um, before Jax was born, on the upper left side, here we are with Lexi in China, <laughs> and below that in Paris. Um, with Jax, we were in South America in 2016. We were in Rio and Argentina. And then the bottom right picture is our annual family ski trip to Colorado, um, and that is after Jax's uh, diagnosis with celiac disease. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of the specifics um, in a few minutes, but let me ask you a question. How many of you have traveled while gluten-free? And how many of you have brought food with you on your trip? <laughs> Everyone, right? Silly question. All right, so I saw this on Char's Instagram account, and it just struck a chord with me, because here it is. It might even be more than two-thirds of the suitcase, right, is the gluten-free food. Um, and I always bring, you know, bring more than you need and, and come home with half of it, but it's better, better to have it than not have it. Um, so this is... Um, what's in our gluten-free suitcase. This is one of our trips, one of our first trips um, in last December to Jamaica, our first international trip after Jax's diagnosis. And I had no idea what we would be able to find in Jamaica. We were staying at two different hotels, but I had no idea if, if we'd be able to find anything, if we'd be able to go to a grocery store. So I brought a little of everything. We had snacks, um, we had um, microwavable mac and cheeses, bags of pasta, uh, char bread and canyon gluten-free bread and bagels. And I don't know if you've seen the Char pizza crust, but they make these great um, pizza crusts that you can keep at room temperature. So I brought a pack of those with me and I would give it to the hotel and say, put sauce and cheese and you know, make this for Jax. Um, so we brought, brought a ton of food with us. And on the next slide, I'll just get into a little more of the specifics of, of what we bring. Um, I don't know if you all know about toaster bags, but toaster bags are great. And I know, obviously, if any of you heard Vanessa speak earlier about the toaster, you may not need to worry about that as much anymore, but toaster bags are great. If you're at a hotel, you can stick a piece of toast in it and put it through the toaster and uh, keep it safe that way. I always bring tin foil, Ziploc bags, um, wipes and soap, and, and even my own dish soap and sponge to wash things off, depending you know, what, what type of situation you're in with a, with a kitchen. Uh, lots of packaged snacks. I bring little cups of cereal. Like I said, bread and bagels, pasta. Sometimes we even bring our own condiments. You just never know what you'll find. Um, so questions to think about when you're traveling, will you have a kitchen? Are you staying in an Airbnb? Are you staying in a hotel? Does the hotel have a kitchenette? Will you have a toaster, a microwave, or a refrigerator? So some of that will depend on you know, what you might bring with you. So how do we research a destination? I do always start with the Find Me Gluten-Free app, which has been mentioned. And if you don't have it, it's a great resource. So you can look up restaurants, or you can look up a destination. It will give you restaurants, and they're rated by other people. And it will tell you if they're celiac or not. And then you can read the reviews and tell their experiences, and they rate it out of five stars. So you can, you, know, you can see how many reviews there are and what kind of ratings it's gotten. But that's just a starting point. I would never trust the app entirely. Um, I also always follow up with phone calls and emails, so call, calling the restaurants, calling the hotels, making a connection or a contact. Find out who the manager is. You know, get their email address. Follow up and document it with an email. So the work kind of never ends, but you know, not, again, not just taking one person's word for it, not just assuming that the person that you talk to on the phone will be there the day that you go in, in person, um, but try to start a relationship. Um, you know, think about if, if you're traveling domestically or internationally. Is there a store nearby where you can stop on the way from the airport and pick up food, so you don't have to travel with a suitcase full of food? Um, and always ask for the manager on site, whether you're in a hotel, whether you're at a restaurant. Um, it's just easier, I feel, to, to deal with the manager. They're always usually pretty knowledgeable. 
Um, sometimes they will roll their eyes at you, and yet, you know, yes, we deal with this all the time, but you, know, you just can't accept that. You have to continue to advocate for your cause. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the specific successes we've had. We've had ups and downs in our gluten-free travel. This is a picture from our trip to Jamaica. And we stayed at two different hotels in Jamaica, the Half Moon and the Jewel Grand, which were both in Montego Bay. And we had great experiences at both. I had emailed ahead of time and told them we were coming, and they both had the head chefs come out and meet us at we were at check-in. So the head chef came, they talked to us, asked, you know, what does Jax like to eat? Does he like pizza? Does he like pasta? What can we make for him? And then at every meal, pretty much, a chef would come out to our table and talk to us. They were extremely, extremely accommodating. Again, you know, I wasn't sure exactly what we would find when we got there, but they were just, just so accommodating. Um, you know, the chef at the, half, uh, the Jewel Grand made up gluten-free pizza for Jackson. He didn't like their pizza dough. So I ended up giving him the shower pizza and said, you know, can you make this for Jax? So again, extremely accommodating, but it is important, I think, ahead of time to make that point of contact. Let them know you're coming so that, so that they're prepared for you. We had a weekend trip um, last January to Connecticut for a squash tournament that my daughter had, and we stayed at the Omni Hotel, and they were phenomenal. They had um, a complete gluten-free buffet at their breakfast, uh, gluten-free dedicated toaster, but I wasn't even 100% sure I wanted to trust that. What if someone else had stuck, you know, their toast? Sorry, I keep bringing up the toaster. <laughs> but, <that's not. laughs> but anyway, I, anyway. Um, so, you know, so they were kind enough to, they would bring out a new box of cereal from us from the back. So, you know, we didn't have to use the one on the buffet. They would bring out fresh toast from the back, and they were just extremely accommodating. And I found with most hotels, especially, I would say, the higher-end hotels, you know, the Hyatt, the Omnis of the world, that, that many of them are familiar, many of them are, you know, willing to go out of the way. Many of them even have dedicated gluten-free ovens or kitchens like that they use for room service and things like that. So if you just ask, um, you might be surprised what you will find. New York City, uh, many of you probably know, is a great place for gluten-free dining. There are many fully gluten-free options, such as Senza Gluten. Um, and we were in New York for a few weekends at the end of August. Um, in Senza Gluten, we um, bumped into people that actually followed our blog and, and, and knew us. Uh, one woman from Ohio actually recognized Jax, and um, you know, she introduced herself. She was in New York for the weekend, so you know, I always say it's a small gluten-free world, um, especially when there are only so many places to go. We kind of bump into each other. Um, but we had, had, had some great experiences in New York. And then um, the last thing I'll touch on here is we are, I mentioned we go skiing annually in um, Vail and Beaver Creek in Colorado. And, for the, for the first time this past March, not only was I entrusting the ski school to take care of my son, you know, from 8.30 or 9 in the morning till 3.30, keeping him safe on the chairlift and, and on the ski slopes, but I also had to worry about his dining experience. So I, again, called ahead of time. I made contact. It took a few phone calls to get the right person, um, but I was able to find in both locations the, the head of, um, you know, the people that would be in charge of the food. And again, they were overly accommodating. They were able to make him gluten-free pasta, a gluten-free sandwich, a gluten-free hot dog on an Udi's bun. They had Udi's prepackaged chocolate chip cookies. So again, they were able to tell me the brand names and you know their preparation processes, and that they, everyone else got a reusable tray, but Jax would have his lunch on a like a paper or cardboard tray. You know, so they just had all kinds of processes in place. Um, and again, kind of over over exceeded my expectations, and really was able to to trust that and feel that he was in good hands. So is it always smooth sailing? Definitely not. We've had some, some bad experiences as well. Uh, one of our favorite pizza places that we would go every year in Vail and Beaver Creek was called Blue Moose. And I looked on their menu ahead of time, and it said they had gluten-free pizza. So we were traveling with our family and another family that was good friends, and we made plans to go, go there for dinner. And we went in, we asked for the manager. She came over, and she basically said, I wouldn't eat here if I were you. I wouldn't eat the gluten-free pizza. It's just not safe. She said, you know, we have these gluten-free crusts, they come sealed, but there's so much flour in our kitchen, I just wouldn't, you know, be there. And I, I, was, I was choked up, I was in tears. Jax and I basically had to leave the dinner um, with our, with, well, we, let, we let John and Lexi stay with our friends, and they gave us, they actually gave us a pizza crust to go. And he and I left, we were in a condo. Luckily I had sauce and cheese somehow <laughs> in the condo. I thought ahead when we were doing our grocery shopping, and we went back um, to our condo and had to make our own gluten-free pizza, so again, you know, why somebody would offer something gluten-free that's not, not safe for celiac, you know, it's beyond me, but, but it does happen. So sometimes you can, you can do the research and, you know, <coughs> you get there and you find out it's just not what you were expecting, but you've got to go with it. Uh, there's another restaurant, small restaurant chain in Colorado called Lark Burger. And on their website, they promote 
that basically everything in the restaurant is gluten-free except for they have brioche buns. So they offer gluten-free buns and they also offer a brioche bun. But everything, the dedicated fryer, they make tater tots and fries and sweet potato fries, everything's gluten-free. So great, I thought, well, leave one night and we'll go there. So we all ordered our burgers, I told them about Jax's celiac disease. And Jax's burger comes, um, they kind of half wrapped the burgers in like a piece of wax paper, half wrapped, it comes on the tray, sandwiched in between my and John's burgers that were on the regular bun. So no pun intended sandwich, literally, you know, gluten bun, gluten free bun, gluten, all touching each other. <laughs> and I just, I, I was, I couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, and I asked them for a new piece of cheese and a new bun. I didn't even ask them, you know, to remake the burger because it kind of seemed protected in there. And they just looked at me like I had three heads. Um, so I think one of the things I found, especially in Colorado, is that there are a lot of those people that are just gluten-free for lifestyle, so you can go to a lot of places and expect gluten-free, but it's not celiac safe. Um, another family tradition is that our family goes to the U.S. Open tennis in New York every year at the end of August, and it's a great family tradition that we have. And I tried to look this year ahead of time on their website to see if they had any gluten-free options, and I couldn't find anything. There were very brief descriptions of the various food vendors that were there. I did find out they had a kosher stand, but I couldn't find anything about gluten-free. Um, so we had some contacts. My husband used to serve on the board of the USTA, and so we had some uh, contacts, and we emailed a few people and got in touch. And you know, the list of gluten-free options that they gave me um, it, it were, you know, a, I think a mushroom taco, a poke bowl. You know, it was nothing that a six-year-old would eat, basically. It was a very strange list. Oh, we have these gluten-free options, but none of them were at dedicated gluten-free stands as well. And, you know, they couldn't guarantee about cross-contamination. So, again, this event that happens in New York in the city of millions of people, you know, an event that hundreds of thousands of people go to. You know, I'm sure Jax is not the only kid with celiac disease going there. So I ended up having to basically pack a sandwich and bring a cooler, and they let us bring our own food in and, you know, had, had to feed him with what I know is safe. So... You know, you just have to be prepared in, the, in those situations. Um, but overall, you know, we've learned a lot in this past. It's only been a little bit over a year since Jax was diagnosed and just about a year since we started our, our blog. Um, and what started as an outlet to share great gluten-free products um, has grown to include restaurants and travel. And I've really learned there's an amazing community out there. I've connected with so many people um, through Instagram, people that we've become friends with. We share recipes, we share product recommendations. You know, people will contact me when my daughter's going off to college. Do you, know, do you think this is a good product? What do you think, you know, what's a good thing they could make in their microwave? So, you know, so somehow, I don't know how, but I've become, you know, a resource, um, learned a lot in the past year, and happy to, to help other people navigate along this journey. Um, we also don't want to let celiac disease stop our family from traveling. We love to travel. We love to live life to the fullest, and so we want to continue to do that. Um, it's a constant education, and I would definitely say, I think Maureen said something similar to this earlier, but, but say yes. You know, um, yes, it's hard. Yes, you know, there's going to be a lot of work to do. Yes, there's going to be a lot of questions you have to ask. Yes, there are going to be failures, but I still think that you know, taking the risk is, is worth it, um, you know, as long as you're, you're prepared, but definitely say yes. As far as what's next for us, um, we will continue to share our gluten-free finds, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I think I, think I said that our account is gluten-free finds underscore PA, um, so we will continue to share that and help people navigate the gluten-free world, so we'd love if you follow along. Um, my husband and I have also started a blog called Celiac Journey, um, which is less focused on, you know, kind of the product and the travel aspects, but more focused on increasing um, awareness and research funding for celiac disease and also fostering inclusion for those with celiac disease. So again, here's the Instagram account and I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has.